most welcome to the fifth lecture of my series on complex analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about roots of a complex number and we will try to visualize where such roots will lie in the complex plane. That means we will talk about the nth roots of a complex number x plus i y. Let me tell you, uh, whenever we talk about roots of a positive integer, we know that any root of a positive integer is smaller than that positive integer. It is imbibed in our mind in that way. But that perspective is not applicable for complex numbers, roots of a complex number, because you cannot simply compare two complex numbers in that way. You cannot find out, you cannot say which complex number is higher or greater than, uh, uh, if, if a particular complex number is greater than another complex number or not. Because the ordering which exists for the set of real numbers does not exist for the set of complex numbers. For example, if I ask you which one is higher, 2i, which one is greater, 2i or 3i? Can you answer? If you say 3i greater than twice i, then this will imply if I do everything in a similar way as what we do for real numbers, then 3i greater than 2i will imply 3i minus 2i greater than 0, which is i greater than 0. If I square both the sides, we get i square greater than 0 which implies minus 1 greater than 0. Can this happen? Never. So 3i cannot be greater than 2i. Okay. Then you can say, okay, fine. Uh, uh, then uh, we, uh, uh, we, we are wrong. 2i will be greater than 3i. Okay, fine. If 2i is greater than 3i, then this will imply in a similar way 2i minus 3i greater than 0, that is minus i greater than 0, that is, uh, again, if I square both the sides, i square greater than 0, which is again minus 1 greater than 0. So, this can also not happen. That means this is not correct. This is also not correct. So, only one possibility remains, that is 2i equal to 3i. If that happens, then in a similar way, uh, we get 2i minus 3i equals to 0, which implies minus i equals to 0, which implies i equals to 0, which is again highly rational. So this can also, mm, uh, this cannot happen. So uh, what, uh, 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 what is happening here? The thing that is happening here is, you cannot apply rule of trichotomy for the set of complex numbers. This ordering and the uh, and, and the entire arithmetic related to this ordering for the real numbers is not applicable for complex numbers. So we cannot compare two complex numbers that which one is higher or which one is greater or which one is smaller. Yeah, that's why I, I, I told you that uh, although in case of positive integers, roots of positive integers, we can say that any root of a positive integer will be smaller than that positive integer. But this notion is not applicable for the roots of a complex number. Any root of a complex number is another complex number. In this video, we will learn how to find out that particular root, how to calculate that particular root and how to plot any root of a complex number. And at the end, we will see or we will visualize a very well-known result that, okay, uh, let's, let's keep that as a surprise. Let us move to the blackboard. Let W be a complex number denoted by W equals to rho e to the power i phi. An nth root of W is a complex number z such that z to the power n is equal to w. So, a complex number z will be called an nth root of w if z to the power n equals to w. Now, let z is equal to r e to the power i theta. Therefore, z to the power n equals to w implies r e to the power i theta whole to the power n 
is equals to rho e to the power i phi, which implies r to the power n e to the power i n theta is equal to rho e to the power i phi, which implies r to the power n is equal to rho and e to the power i into n theta is equal to e to the power i into phi. Now we know that e to the power i x equals to e to the power i y implies that x is equals to y plus 2k pi where this k is an integer. K belongs to the set of integers. We discussed this in lecture 3. If you have forgotten, just quickly have a revision of lecture 3. Now, if we apply this formula in this case, then we get that r is equals to nth root of nth root of rho. Now, this is the regular nth root. This is the regular nth root. And by virtue of the formula which is written there in yellow color, we get here x is n theta and y is phi. So we get n theta is equal to phi plus twice k pi. Now what is k? k is an integer z. Now uh, uh, we, we can say something more about k which I'll, I'll be telling after I write this next line. K can be categorized in a more definitive way. So this implies r equals to nth root of rho. This is the regular nth root. And this theta will be phi divided by n if we just cross multiply plus twice k pi divided by n. Now, this k can be any integer but for our discussion, we can restrict k to be 0, 1, 2, etc. up to n minus 1. We can restrict k only in this n number of values. Why? Because for all other integral values of k, your theta will produce the same complex number as we will be getting for these values of k. We are not going to get any new z for this. For example, if k is equals to n, if k is equals to n, then we get your theta is equals to phi divided by n plus twice k is equal to n, so n pi divided by n. This n gets cancelled, so I get theta is equal to phi divided by n plus twice pi. Now, we know that e to the power phi divided by n is equals to, e to the power, sorry, e to the power i into phi divided by n is equals to e to the power i into phi divided by n plus twice pi. We discussed this thing in our lecture 3 also and this is simply because sine and cosine are periodic functions of period 2 pi. And you can write e to the power i x as cosine x plus i sine x. So this tells us that e to the power i phi by n is equal to e to the power i phi by n plus twice pi. Now, if I plug in, in this formula of theta, if I plug in, k equals to 0, I get theta equals to phi by n. That means this is particularly the value of theta for k equals to 0. And this is the value of theta for k equals to n. So the complex number z that we are going to get for k equals to 0 and k equals to n are actually same. That's why I said apart from this n values of k, if you choose any other value for the value of k, then at the end you will land up to the same z. 
So it is sufficient if we consider these n values of k only. That's why uh, I am rest. I have restricted k in this n uh, integers because at the end, for any other choice of k, the z that you will be getting is one of the z that you have got for these values of k. So that's why I have given this restriction. Now, if we if we if we summarize and write everything, so what we have got, we have got that. Uh, uh, our our nth root of w, our nth root of w, which you have represented by z, and z is equals to r e to the power i theta, where this is my expression for r, this is my expression for theta. So I can write this as nth root of rho e to the power i into phi divided by n plus twice k pi divided by n where my k will be 0, 1, 2, etc. n minus 1. That means I will get n number of nth roots and my w is given as equals to rho e to the power i phi. So if w is equals to rho e to the power i phi, then this give us the formula. This particular expression give us the formula to find out n nth roots of this w. Is it okay? So if w is given, we know what is my rho, what is my phi. If, the, if, if, if my requirement is known, uh, given, then I know what is n. So I will simply plug in the values of n, rho, and phi in the formula, and, and, and we will get the n nth roots. Okay. Uh, let us see some examples. Let us see some examples. So the first one, say, I'm naming as example one or exercise one. Say uh, the question is find, say, cube root of minus 1 plus i. So the question is find cube root of minus 1 plus i. So our first task will be to represent uh, uh, this complex number minus 1 plus i here as uh, a, a, in, in its polar form. So here in this question w is equals to minus 1 plus i. I need to represent it in polar form. So uh, uh, let's do it. Let's multiply root 2 in and out. So this will be minus 1 by root 2 plus i into 1 by root 2. So that means I can write this as root 2 into, uh, I can write this as cos 3 pi divided by 4 plus i into sine 3 pi divided by 4. Am I right? Cos 3 pi by 4 is minus 1 by root 2. Sine 3 pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. So this, that means this is square root of 2 into e to the power i into 3 pi divided by 4. So this is my complex number w. Therefore, we have got, therefore, w is equal to this. That means in this problem, that is, I can write in this problem here, n is equals to 3. Uh, my rho, that is root 2. So rho will be 2 to the power half. Root 2 means 2 to the power half. And my phi is equal to 3 pi divided by 4. So these are my n rho and phi. Therefore, uh, and k, okay, and k, and k will vary from, as per the condition, k varies from 0 to n minus 1. Here n is 3, so k will be I, 0, 1, and 2. So for these three values of k, uh, we will get 3 cube roots of minus 1 plus i. So simple, I have everything. I'll just plug in, in the formula and I'll get the values. So let's do it. So for k is equals to 0, would we get? 
For k equals to zero, we get say z1. Let us rename that as a name that as z1. So z1 will be nth root of uh, rho. N here is three. So cube root of rho. Rho is two to the power half. That means that is cube root of two to the power half into e to the power i into phi by n. So that is three pi by four divided by n is here three. So three pi by four divided by three plus k is zero. So um, two into zero into pi. So there is nothing. So uh, that part is gone. So this. So that means if I write it in a more simplified way, it will be 2 to the power half, cube root of 2 to the power half. That means 2 to the power half, whole to the power 1 by 3. So 2 to the power 1 by 6 into e to the power uh, 3 will get cancelled, i into pi by 4. So this will be my one root for this z2. So I am naming z2, which I will find out for k equals to 1. So z2 will be in a similar way, cube root of 2 to the power half into e to the power i into, uh, this expression will be same as pi by 4 plus, uh, now this will be k is 1. So 2 pi, 2 pi divided by 3, 2k pi by n, so here n is 3, so 2 pi by 3. Let me have the for, uh, formula on screen so that you can understand. So that. Now if we simplify, this will become 2 to the power 1 by 6 e to the power i into uh, pi by 4 plus 2 pi by 3, 8 pi plus 3 pi, 11 pi divided by 12 e to the power i into 11 pi divided by 12. So for k equals to 2, what do we get now? z3 equals to cube root of 2 to the power half into e power i into pi by 4 plus 2 into 2 pi by 3. So 4 pi divided by 3. So that means 2 to the power 1 by 6 into e to the power i into uh, 16 pi plus 3 pi. So 19 pi divided by 12. So these are my three cube roots corresponding to your w equals to uh, cube root of uh, w equals to sorry these are my cube roots corresponding to w equals to uh, minus one plus i or in polar form we can write this as uh, uh, two to the power half into e to the power i into three pi divided by 4. So if this is your w, then this z1, z2, z3 are the three uh, cube roots of this w. It's pretty simple. Now, uh, I'm, I'm sure you want to see how, uh, how this can be plotted or how we can visualize this. Fine, let's plot. So uh, if you think, if you consider uh, this, this w, so you, you can understand that a form of w is 2 to the power half into e to the power i 3 pi by 4. So this w will lie on a circle of radius 2 to the power half. Okay, let us first plot that. So let us consider, let us consider this as the, let us consider this as the circle of radius 2 to the power half. Let me have the axis also. Let me have the axis also. Uh, then uh, where will be W? W will be at an angle 3 pi by 4. So 3 pi by 4 will lie somewhere. Mm, let's say 3 pi by 4 will lie. Okay, 3 pi by 4 will lie somewhere at, at this position. Say 3 pi by 4 will lie at somewhere at this position. This may be my 3 pi by 4. Hmm? So maybe if I join this. Say this, say this is my W. Now, so this is my W. Now, uh, uh, let us see where this 
Z1, Z2, Z3 lies. Now, as per the form of Z1, Z2, Z3, if you look at the form carefully, 2 to the power 1 by 6, 2 to the power 1 by 6, 2 to the power 1 by 6. That means Z1, Z2, Z3 will lie on a circle of radius 2 to the power 1 by 6. Now, you know that 2 to the power 1 by 6 will be uh, slightly lesser than 2 to the power 1 by 2. So, uh, that will be um, a circle um, smaller than this, slightly smaller than this. So, I can think about the circle as, say, uh, maybe something like this. So, this is my circle with radius 2 to the power uh, 1 by 6. So, um, uh, this is, uh, so Z1, Z2, Z3 will lie on this white circle. Now, where they will exactly lie? If you look at the values of Z1, Z2, Z3 carefully, Z1 will lie at an angle. Uh, uh, pi by 4, Z1 will lie at an angle pi by 4. So maybe, maybe Z1 will lie maybe here. So Z1 probably will lie here. So this one will be my, say, I can say this as my Z1. Uh, Z2, Z2 will lie at an angle 11 pi by 12. Okay. So 11 pi by 12 means slightly less than pi. So 11 pi by 12 may be something like this. So this will be my Z2, 11 pi by 12. And next uh, Z3, 19 pi by 12. 19 pi by 12 will be uh, uh, something like this, will lie somewhere like this. So say so this is my Z3. So this is my Z1, this is my Z2, this is my Z3, when my W is this one. So this is pretty simple. Uh, you can very easily uh, find out uh, the root of n nth roots of complex num of a complex number W, and you can very easily plot them too. Okay, so this is how you can visualize roots of a complex number. Now, let me give you a very interesting follow-up. But before that, let us find out quickly what will be the nth root of unity. Means, I'm saying what will be nth root of 1. So, if we consider, if we consider w equals to 1, that means uh, equals to 1 means 1 into e to the power i into 0. Okay. So if I rep this, this will be the polar form. So that means here, my here my uh, a row will be one, and my phi is actually zero. So if I consider this as w, and if I find out, if I try to find out the nth root of one, can you tell me what will be the formula nth root of one? Quickly, let us recollect the formula once again. The formula is nth root of rho nth root of w is equal to nth root of rho e to the power i phi by n plus twice k pi by n. So here, in case of 1, if my choice is unity, then this rho is equal to 1 and this phi is equals to 0. So that means e to the power simply e to the power i twice k pi by n. So I can write nth root of 1 as I can write nth root of 1 as 1 into e to the power i into twice k pi divided by n, where this k will be 0, 1, 2, etc. up to n minus 1. Clear? So that means e to the power, therefore I can write nth root of 1 is equal to e to the power i twice k pi divided by n. Uh, in polar form and in rectangular form, we can write this as cosine twice k pi divided by n plus i into sine twice k pi divided by n. Pretty simple. Where this k is equals to 0, 1, 2, etc. up to n minus 1. So, nth root of unity in rectangular form can be represented in this way. In Sorry, in polar form can be represented in this way. And in rectangular form can be represented in this way.
this is the formula for nth root of 1. Now let us see for a specific value of n, uh, 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 what, what happens, how we can, what will be the exactly values for a specific value of n. Now uh, let this n is equal to, say a pretty simple choice, let us this n equals to 3, arbitrarily choosing a value for n. You can plug in any other value for n as per your wish. I'm just plugging in n equals to 3. So n equals to 3 means your k will be 0. n equals to 3 means your k will be equals to 0, 1, 2. So for k equals to 0, I will get 1 cube root. k equals to 1, I'll get 1 cube root. k equals to 2, I'll get another cube root. Let us find out uh, all, all of them one by one, sorry. So for k equals to 0, for k equals to 0 as per the formula nth root of nth root of 1 for k equals to 0 will be e to the power i into 0. That means uh, that is equal to 1. So for k equals to 0, uh, uh, the nth root of 1 is actually 1. Next, for k equals to 1, for k equals to 1, nth root of 1, if you plug in the value of k as 1 in the formula, that will be e to the power i into twice pi divided by 3, because n is 3. So this will be, mm, this is this is my uh, a root for, for k equals to 1. Now, uh, if, you, if you wish to find out this in rectangular form, you can write this e to the power i 2 pi by 3 as cosine 2 pi by 3 plus i sine twice pi by 3. So that means this will be equals to minus half plus i into, yes, root 3 by 2. So this will be your uh, root for k, a, a cube root of, this will be cube root. Actually, I, I can simply write cube root of uh, 1. So this will be my cube root of 1. This will be my cube root of 1 for k equals to 1. And I'll get another cube root that will be for k equals to 2. So for k equals to 2, so for k equals to 2, uh, uh, cube root of 1 can be written as e to the power i into 2 into 2 pi, that is 4 pi divided by 3. So again, in rectangular form, it will be cosine 4 pi by 3 plus i into sine 4 pi divided by 3. So this will be minus half. Now minus i into root 3 by 2. So minus half, minus i into root 3 by 2. Minus half. That means uh, these two constitutes uh, a minus half plus minus i into root 3 by 2. I can write in this way. So these three are the Mm, are the are the uh, 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 cube root of unity so one this one and this one in rectangular form and in polar form this this and uh, 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 e to the power i into zero so these three are the cube roots of one in polar form now i'm sure you 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 are thinking uh, to plot uh, these roots uh, 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 graphically. So let's do it. So now if you wish to plot it, so clearly the forms tells us, the polar forms tells us because everywhere you can see that 1 is multiplied. Everywhere you can see that 1 is multiplied. That is R is 1. So the radius is 1. That means all these will lie on a circle of radius 1. So let's first plot a circle of radius 1. Let's first plot a circle of radius 1. I'm pretty uh, so bad at drawing as you know. So let us consider this as the circle of radius. So no, let's take the axis. Now uh, where the roots will lie? Fine. So first for k equals to 0 it is 1. So 1 will suddenly lie at this position. So this is my you know, 1. Okay, fine. Uh, let us let us give some names to all this all these roots. So let us call this as Z1, this as Z2, this as Z3. Okay, so this is my Z1. So this is my Z1. Fine. 
Then Z2. Z2, if you look at the polar form, the angle here is 2 pi by 3. So 2 pi by 3. 2 pi by 3 will be, will I say, somewhere like this. So I am saying this as my Z2. And Z3, the angle is 4 pi by 3. 4 pi by 3 means this will lie somewhere, um, say, in somewhere like this. So this will be my Z3. So this is my Z1, this is my Z2, and this is my Z3. So yes, fine. Uh, these are the roots and popularly, uh, you probably know that as per popular notation, sorry, as per popular notation, we represent this uh, 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 Z2 as uh, omega. We represent this Z2 as omega and we represent the Z3. Actually, if you write this Z2 as omega, if you look at these two carefully, if you look at these two carefully, specifically, if you look at these two carefully, you can very easily identify that actually Z3 is equals to Z2 square. Means if you take a square here, the two will be multiplied with this, this 2 pi by 3, it will become 4 pi by 3. Z3 is actually Z2 square. So if Z2 is represented as omega, then Z3 will be actually omega square. This is a uh, by popular notation we represent in this way. So uh, you can call it Z1, Z2, Z3, or or you can call it uh, Z1 or 1 omega omega square. These are the three roots. Now the interesting point that I, 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 I was referring to at the beginning and which I kept as a surprise. If you look at these three white lines as vectors, if you look at these three white lines as vectors, if you look at these three white lines as vector, outward vectors, and if you take their sum, you will get a very interesting thing. Let us do that. Let us do that. So first, to do the sum, let's have an axis. Now, I'll take the sum of these three vectors, z1, z2, z3, as per, as per, as per the names. So I'm, I'm looking this from the perspective of vectors, and I'm adding them. So first Z1, okay. So this is my Z1, okay. So this is my Z1. Now Z1 plus Z2. So Z1 plus Z2, uh, let me move parallel to Z2. So this is Z1 plus Z2. So, okay, sorry. So if this vector is Z1, if this vector is Z2, so this is Z1 plus Z2. Now Z3, let me move parallel to Z. So Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3, this is my Z3. So what will be the sum? Z1, Z1 plus Z2 is this point. Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 is actually this. What is this? This is the origin. Therefore, what we have got? We have got that Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 is equals to zero. If we look in this way, or if our nomenclature is omega and omega squared, we got 1 plus omega plus omega square is equals to 0, where what is omega? Omega is cube root of 1, which is a very known formula to us and which you have proved maybe in a different way. Maybe you have proved this in a different way, but this gives us a very nice visualization and graphical representation that the sum of the cube roots of unity is equals to zero. And to be more, uh, uh, to make it more general, we can even say that the sum of the n nth roots of unity will also be zero. You can just uh, plug in any value for n and you can just do this exercise. You will see at the end, if you have the perspective of vector addition, you will see at the end that the sum will be zero. That means we can write even a general result that summation zi, i equals to 1 to n equals to zero, where zi are nothing but nth root of 1. So we got a nice result that the sum of all the nth root of 1 is equals to 0. And we got a, a, a very popular formula in 
the notation omega using the notation omega that 1 plus omega plus omega square equals to 0. So this is indeed a nice visualization if you if you if you somehow mix the perspective of vectors in this uh, uh, in this representation, then you can very easily visualize and prove that the sum of n nth roots of unity is equal to zero. So that's it for this video. In the next video from complex variables and numbers, we will move to functions of complex variables and gradually we will move to the analysis part and you will see that things will be even more interesting. Till then, take care.